Yo, what's up, guys? We are Chopped Anime, three of the almighty Chopped Anime. We're back to chop up another episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, episode 21. And the one thing, I, the main thing I got out of this episode, the bad guys are winning, man. They're one step ahead of the Tokyo school and Kyoto school. Um, they may have won the battle, you know, with, with Hollow Purple and Brother... You know, they might they may have won the battle there, but they they're losing the war and they don't even realize it. They caught casualty after casualty after casualty. Mahito got six fingers and he has three cursed objects. Um, they're collecting all these objects specifically for this big day. And uh, they are planning to seal away. Gojo, but it seems like every time they get into a big situation with the Tokyo students or the Kyoto students, that they have they throw out this this curveball at them. They throw out this 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 facade of oh, this is what we're trying to do. And they stop the this is what they're trying to do, but they never stop the this is what we're actually trying to do. You know, so they're doing a good job with that. And uh it's actually pretty interesting to see uh where this is gonna go, man. Um the bad guys are smart. Gay told that inside of knowledge, he's clearly the brains of the situation there. And um, I'm, 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 I can't wait. We got to see a little bit of background that we'll probably discuss later on uh, Yaga um, and Gato's relationship. But as I'm very interested to see where these roots from Gato come from. Is he, is he actually strong or is he just winning right now because of the inside of knowledge that he has? Uh, what do you guys think about the uh, the bad guys winning so far? Uh, yeah, I think you hit the uh, nail on that one. Um, it doesn't seem like Tokyo or Kyoto Jujutsu school stop the main goal of the bad guys, right? Like, as you mentioned, they had this sub plan of, okay, trap these people in the veil. Don't trap Gojo in the veil. Cause he'll probably go rescue the people in the veil and then have Mahito kind of in the background working all the cursed objects. Not only was that their goal, they also wanted to slim down the amount of people they had at the Jujutsu high and Mahito check, check on both goals. And it clearly worked out as Gato was planning. Gato's pretty mysterious. So he was also in that, that flashback that uh, Principal Yaga was talking about where, you know, if only we had done this or that, you know, these bad situations wouldn't have arise. So Gato has something to do with the schools. So maybe he was a sorcerer that went to school and he just turned bad, you know, because of the same hate that the elders were channeling towards Yuji or something like that. Um the other thing is that Gato, Gato has to have some sort of inner knowledge on how this kind of stuff work, works because he knows exactly how strong Gojo is. He's not underestimating him at all. You know, he he labeled Jogo as being like close to the, you know, seven, eight fingers. And even that would be no match for Gojo. And in this episode, we also found out that Gato was able to catch on that Sukuna's interested in one of the students, which is yeah, Megumi. Man. So I don't know how he could have even deduced that. So he has to have some sort of knowledge. Like this, Gato is a very sneaky dude. And he his he must have a past relationship with all of these sorcerers. That's why they don't want him to see, they don't want them to see his face. The animators are showing us the person he has a connection to. But I think Gato was saying that due to Sakuna's actions, I have deduced that he has a stake in one of the students. I don't think he actually yeah. knows it's Fushiguro. Okay. Right, Fushiguro. right. So, but even even yeah. that is an impressive... Even that, that is pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, yeah. You're right, yeah. you're right. 
because he was like one of the students is going to be a bomb. I guess yeah, that 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 kind of clarifies that he doesn't know who exactly it is, but he knows that if you were to kill one of them, Sukuna gonna act up, and they they clearly can't handle Sukuna. <laughs> And uh, it doesn't seem like they can handle Gojo either because there's this whole big push like, oh, we need to save our energy, save all of our strength for October 31st. Mm. Yes. Yeah. So the October 31st date, in my opinion, my theory here is because October 31st is Halloween and that would be possibly the strongest day for cursed objects or cursed energy or whatever, cursed spirits. Because remember, all of these spirits and all these cursed spirits are manifested by hate. And I, I'm, I'm not sure if fear is involved, but in one of the prior episodes, Mahito, was it Mahito explaining it to someone what cursed spirits were? Um, yeah. But he was saying that most of the energy of the hate goes towards like, you know, uh, scary things from movies or things under the bed of the boogeyman. And that's all Halloween is about. All these fictional characters of who we're scared of and our greatest fears and these these things. So I think October 31st is probably the day that they can be like at their, their, their superpower, like their, their heights. So... And this is a day that they can blend in with society too, with costumes and all that stuff going around. That's a, you know, I think October thirty first is a very strategic, smart day. It's not just a random day. So yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good theory. Yeah, I could I could see that. You know, it, it equating to their full moon day, where their their power is the highest, the tide is the highest. You know. So that's that's a pretty good theory, Hosea. The one thing I wanted to question after seeing this episode, um, I, I have concerns because Gojo is strong and they know he's very strong, but I don't think he is smart enough to protect everybody in the school. Um He's more, he, I think, and I don't think it's because he's not smart. I think his arrogance will come back to bite him in the butt later on in the, in the show, because when you're that strong and you're that, when you're that strong and you carry around such a bravado and arrogance with you, you kind of let your guard down at all times. Cause you're kind of that, you're that dude, bro. You've, you've never been challenged. He's literally never been challenged, bro. Like at all. Um, so I think that is why they can always have a step ahead of him. They, I think Gato understands Gojo's the way he works mentally. He gets that he's strong, but he understands that this guy doesn't think on his toes at all times. Gojo is assessing the situation after the fact every time. He's never assessing the situation but prior to the fact. And he's very nonchalant with everything. And he's very uh, goofy and playful. And I think that's the reason that the other side has a step up ahead of him. What do you guys think about that? Yeah, I think I that's, do. he could definitely go, you know, he can definitely mess up that way with his carefree attitude. The other thing I was thinking was that Gojo clearly cares a lot about his students. He cares a lot about Yuji and he wants to protect them all. So I'm hoping there, there's not a situation where Gojo sacrifices himself for this newer generation that that seems like a you know, a thing that could definitely happen knowing gojo and you know because if they can't beat him you know they have to you know attack him where he's weak which is you know being a sacrifice for his students yeah i i think hosea is right in that fact that he's probably stronger than he is smart but I still think he could always mess up the villain's game plan. If if he were to able to, you know, figure out their main goal, I think he's strong enough where he can he can pretty much put a put a hamper in their in their plans. So the, the end of the episode was a it was a, it was pretty nice. You had both the Kyoto and Tokyo schools just playing ball together. It was a very light hearted situation. Uh, but the, the important thing is that it seems like 
people don't really hate Yuji, Yuji as much now. It seems like, you know, he was one of him and Toto were the stars defending against the special grade. So now they've, they've softened up to him. The Tokyo school already likes Yuji. Now it seems like the, the Kyoto school is now okay with, um, with Yuji and is just friendly. They're all friendly with each other. So that's nice. We're getting some, we're getting the bond amongst all the jujitsu sorcerers, all the students. Yeah, the biggest thing is Kamo, you know, Noritoshi even saying, I mean, I don't think he explicitly said it, but he said, you are right. And it reminded him of his childhood and what his mom said. And that's always like the bonding moment. Um, so, yeah, I think he'll definitely start warming up to Yuji himself. And who knows, man, maybe he'll go against Principal Gakuganji orders one of these days and uh, help Yuji out. I think the one thing we should just quickly address, do you, th- the Sakuna and Fushigiro thing, it keeps coming up, is, do you guys just think that Fushigiro is going to have one of those Orochimaru Sasuke moments where he's just like, to obtain such power, I have to be evil? He he can just be had by the, the, the dark side type of thing? Well, what do you guys think the dynamic is between those two? So I did get some Sasuke vibes from him when he was like, oh, I got to get stronger, catch up to Yuji. So I feel like he's willing to do anything to get strong. But I also think another thing that could happen is maybe Fushiguro is a descendant of Sukuna somehow. Because Sukuna was a person before, right? I think that is theory so far. I'm not sure. Well, he had... 10 arm no he had four <laughs> arms so i don't think he i'm not i'm not too sure actually i don't know resurrection human, human can have four arms but he could have been a yuji situation he he was a curse actually he's called the king of curses so he was definitely a curse i think but do you think he was a like in in defense of amoya's theory that he was a human do you think he possibly was a Yuji situation that ate a curse and became a curse. Cause Yuji think about this. If Yuji became ever ate those 20 fingers, Sakuna might be stronger than he is just by himself with 20 fingers. He's black flashing in Sakuna. Oh doing, my stuff. God. He's yeah. doing all types of stuff. Now, if he eats those 20 fingers. Yeah. So, I mean, just, that's just theory though. Manga people, you guys can, if you, if you like, just confirm or deny if he was a human ever. I don't yeah, mind. Nah, knowing. Nah, you opening Pandora's box here. <laughs> nah, nah. Man, like, you know, our comments going to get flooded with all sorts of manga stuff. All right. Well, never mind. Don't say anything. I, manga. It seems more likely that he's he's like Mahito. Mahito is a curse, but he kind of looks like a human. Right. So I think Sakuna is kind of mm-hmm. like that, but with four arms. And, you know, Mahito can do domain expansion and all that kind of stuff, too. I think it's likely that Sakuna is kind of like Mahito, but you know, he, the theory about him being a, you know, a human that's eating a cursed object could also be true as well. So that's episode 21 of Jujutsu Kaisen. We have a lot of theories, a lot of questions, not enough answers, a lot of concerns for the good guys and a lot of praise for the bad guys so far. So we're interested to see what happens in episode 22 of Jujutsu Kaisen. We'll be back next week again with another review. Subscribe, like, comment, do what you got to do. Chopped anime.